Thanks for dropping in. Last week, I shared the solution to the Lunar Lighthouse Puzzle Box, the latest design in my 3D printed Puzzle Box collection. In this video, I'll show you how you can build your own copy. But before I start, the assembly process will spoil most of the puzzle solution. So if you want to solve it on your own, skip this video and have a friend print and assemble a lighthouse for you. That takes care of the spoiler warning, so let's build a puzzle. The Lunar Lighthouse has a lot of different configuration options. These options can make the puzzle easier, more difficult, or more robust against aggressive solution techniques. Let's start with the recommended configuration. We'll need to print a base, a base slider, left and right toggle buttons, top and bottom shells, a lamp room and a lamp room cap, a moon disc and moon disc stem, a cam, a false wall, a bonus moon, top and bottom windows, and three alignment pegs. All these parts are very easy to print and require no supports. I've included my exact print settings and the filaments I used in the video description. The recommended configuration will also need quite a lot of hardware. 17 6x3 millimeter magnets, one 12 millimeter long M3 socket head bolt, three 14 millimeter long M4 metal pins, and of course some super glue. Let's start with the base of the lighthouse and then work our way up. Find the base piece and glue one 6x3 magnet into each of these seven holes, including this one in the center right there. These should all be placed in the same orientation, and they should be pushed far enough in that they sink well below the print surface. This helps to avoid catching on moving parts. Next, we're going to take the left and right toggle buttons and glue one magnet into the bottom of each. These magnets should be aligned so that the toggle buttons are pulled toward the base. Next, we're going to add a magnet to the base slider. Once the glue is set, we'll put all these base parts together. Here's a good time to make sure the parts slide smoothly. If your parts have any printing issues, it's possible you may need to sand down some surfaces to get them to fit. Fortunately, that wasn't a problem here, and these parts are sliding just fine. Next, we're going to add three of these 14 millimeter long in four metal pins. One goes into the top of each toggle button. It's okay if it's a pretty tight fit. The last pin drops into this hole in the base. This pin does a lot of traveling through the puzzle, so it's extremely important that it has enough clearance to move freely. By the way, these pins are the same size I use in the Barrel Cooper's puzzle box, so I happen to have a ton of them. You could also cut your own pins using smooth rod that's four millimeters in diameter. Just make sure to smooth the ends. That'll help the pins slide back and forth. Next, we'll place the cam over the central base peg. The hole that runs all the way through the cam should line up with the hole where we drop that third metal pin. The other metal pins will slide into small tracks on the bottom of the cam. With this installed, we can take out the sliding piece and test out the toggle mechanism. Okay, the base layer is done, and this is the most complex part of the entire puzzle. Let's set that aside and grab the top and bottom shells. As you can see, each shell is actually a single part with a few color swaps and fake seams. You can print these as separate sections if you want and then glue them together. But this option is stronger and makes assembly a lot faster. Inside the bottom shell, are three more holes for magnets. Let's glue those in, making sure that all three magnets are facing the same direction and are pushed all the way in. This shell also has three conical shaped holes that go all the way through the roof or the floor, depending on which way you look at it. These holes are for three very small alignment pegs. Let's wedge these into place, making sure that the pins are pushed as far into the holes as they'll go. They should sit flush, if not slightly inset. If these pegs feel loose, add a drop of glue. An overzealous puzzle solver might try pushing them down like buttons, and that could cause problems. The remaining four magnets go into the top of the moon disc. These should be oriented so that the disc is pulled toward the magnets we just installed. Once the glue is set for both parts, 
we can insert the moon disk into the shell. Now we can add the moon disk stem, which has a little peg modeled into it to make sure it's correctly aligned with the moon disk. Check that orientation and then use a 12 millimeter long M3 bolt to hold the parts together. How far you tighten the bolt will affect how freely the moon disk spins. This is a matter of preference, but I use a slightly looser fit. Next we'll connect this assembly to the base. This connection is pretty important. It needs to be strong, but it's near multiple moving parts that we don't want to accidentally glue. I recommend adding a couple drops of super glue near the three pinholes in the base. Here, here, and here. It's really important not to get any glue on the rotating cam, the long curved slider, or the toggle buttons. You can also add small lengths of filament to each pinhole, which acts as an alignment peg for the two parts. This won't add much strength to the connection, but it can keep the parts from slipping around, and it guarantees that the two parts are oriented correctly. With the base mostly assembled, rotate the moon disk stem until you see an empty compartment in the window cutout. Now we'll take this bonus moon and drop it into this false wall piece, like so, and then take both of those and insert that into the empty compartment. Rotate the disk again to lock the false wall into place. Now we can add the bottom window frame, which may be tight enough to fit without glue. Okay, there aren't many parts left. Let's add the top window to the indent in the top shell. Again, this part might be tight enough to hold without glue. That'll depend mostly on your prints. Now we'll add the lamp room cap to the lamp room and place both of those inside the top shell. And finally, we'll lock up the puzzle by solving it in reverse. That's my recommended configuration, but there are a couple more options you can consider when printing and assembling your own copy. The standard base uses three metal dowel pins. Two of these are used as hinges in the toggle buttons. That's fine if you already have correctly sized pins or don't mind cutting down your own. But if that's an issue, you can switch out the standard toggle buttons and replace them with this alternate design. These bolt style toggle buttons use 12 millimeter long M3 bolts instead of the metal pins. You'll still need one metal pin for the main puzzle mechanism, but now you'll have fewer oddball parts to source. If the 17 magnet requirement feels a little steep, you can get by with a few less. The left and right toggle buttons are linked, so only one side actually needs magnets to get some degree of snapping action. This slider piece isn't exactly pivotal to the puzzle solution. So, as long as your print is tight enough, you can save two magnets there. All told, that's seven fewer magnets. For my copy, the two outer shells were printed as single parts with filament swaps. But if filament swaps aren't your thing, or you're using polymers that won't adhere to each other, these sections can be printed all as separate parts. Just glue them together after printing. Finally, if you're looking for a more difficult puzzle, this hole in the base has a secret smaller inset that's sized for a 3x3mm magnet. Adding the magnet here will hold the steel pin in place until you give the lighthouse a sharp shake. Just make sure the magnet is pushed all the way into the hole, otherwise it'll be too close to the pin and it won't let go. That's it for assembly options. Next week I'll release a third and final video for this project. This video will cover the puzzle mechanism, the design process, and all the fails I ran into along the way. I hope you'll enjoy this behind the scenes look. But until then, happy printing and thanks for stopping by. Thank you.